What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about several different horror topics in this video here today. We'll talk about Terrify 4, Chucky, Until Dawn, the film, and then we'll talk about Scream 7. So starting off here with Terrifier 4, Damien Leone has talked about Terrifier 4 or teased it even further, I should say, while talking with Variety. He said, it will certainly be an epic showdown, an epic closure to this Art the Clown saga. The idea I'm toying with in my head would probably be in some regards the most experimental, so I can't dive into it too much. Some really, really crazy things will happen in the next one. Now, without going into any specifics, hopefully some of those crazy things involve saving a certain character and maybe getting a breath of relief with a certain twist related to another character since it didn't happen on screen and yeah because <laughs> we didn't see anything so maybe there's still hope for this character but those of you who saw the film you know what i'm talking about as far as like saving somebody goes and probably going into a, a different type of realm or something like that but like i've been saying when it comes to terrifier and with Damien Leone's previous comments about his vision for a quadrilogy, hopefully once this is all said and done, he can look back on this and be proud of the fact that he gave us one of the best modern horror sagas, horror series, in recent memory, quadrilogies. Now, at the box office, Terrifier 3 has been absolutely crushing it. Unfortunately for Joker 2, because this is embarrassing, it is dominating that film. It's going to take the number one spot this weekend. So congratulations to Damien Leone and Lauren Lavera and everyone involved with Terrifier, uh, David Howard Thornton. So the film, I think, is supposed to make like... 20 million this weekend i could be overshooting that but i think the report i saw mentioned 20 million or so it's definitely making above 10 and the film is beginning praised i'm probably going to go back out and see it in theaters for the first time i haven't seen it in theaters just yet the first time i saw it was at home i'm just going to let the crowd die down because i am not going to risk someone throwing up on me potentially and yeah i'll go see terrifier 3 in theaters probably within the next week or so just so i can experience it in theaters i'll probably go very early too just to again minimize the chances of someone throwing up on me but let me know what you guys think about the terrifier 4 update what do you hope to see in terrifier 4 and if you know what i'm talking about do you think that person actually bit it or do you think there's a chance they are alive because we didn't see it happen now let's talk about chucky this campaign, at least with Chucky, another campaign I would say fans have been tricked into investing in. Bloody Disgusting highlighted this trend with a report. It's the Save Chucky campaign. The Save Chucky campaign has been going strong on social media for the past week, driven by fans and various fan accounts dedicated to the franchise. The hashtag has even made its way into Twitter's trending tab a few times now, a testament to how passionate the, fan the fan base is for Don Mancini and company's particular brand of horror comedy entertainment. How likely is it to make a difference? Well, that's impossible to say, but a precedent has been set for canceled shows to be brought back to life due to fan demand, with Brooklyn 999 being a notable recent example of the trend. The series was canceled by Fox back in 2018 and was shortly thereafter picked up by NBC, where it ran for three additional seasons. Here's the thing. Brooklyn 999, from my memory, was suffering from diminishing returns in terms of viewership, but by the time it was even canceled, it itself was still garner was still garnering over 1 million viewers for the episodes. Chucky is not doing that and it's being hosted by two. Chucky was not even managing to consistently get anywhere over 900,000 viewers a week. Now yes, they've talked about how it was popular on Peacock, so why not put it on Peacock? That's not relevant when your home networks were USA and Sci-Fi. Sci-Fi canceled it. USA could have kept it. They didn't want to keep it because nobody was watching it. The viewership wasn't there. Why we don't want to engage with that is beyond me. They say, oh, well, they said it was the number one show on the network. Yeah. And compared to what? They never gave any specific details. Now, if you're telling me that these Nielsen ratings are fake, I'm going to be convinced even more you're delusional. The Nielsen ratings are not fake. They're saying that the show was averaging around 200,000 or so views per episode. And with as, as expensive as the show seemed to be, that's not going to be something networks keep investing in. That's a that's a poor return. <laughs> I just don't understand the point in investing in it. I think what we should look forward to is the film that we inevitably get. And hopefully the trio story can be resolved there. But of course, people who don't understand it are going to go ahead and twiddle their fingers away, trying to save Chucky the same way renewing Chucky didn't work. Saving Chucky's not going to work either. I, I, I just don't see the big deal. So... Let's talk about Until Dawn. The Until Dawn movie has wrapped production. Now, if you are like me 
and waiting for confirmation on what exactly is happening with this story, then you don't care about this film still yet. In the sense that you were interested until you saw those rumored plot details. Now, the rumored plot details and the source of the details combined with what the crew have been saying make it apparent this is shaking up the story from what we saw in the game into something myself and many other fans couldn't care less about seeing. It could be a good film. I'm not going to take that away from it. But the argument in the end might be again. Why did you need to call this Until Dawn if it bears little resemblance to the game? Why? At the moment, it would appear to have more in common with a movie like Happy Death Day. It's just it's it's probably going to be a good movie. It's just going to be one of those things where why did you have to attach it to Until Dawn? Why <laughs> is it going to be canically like a sequel or sorts? What, what's going on? Time will tell. Now, the rumored plot details, I'm being delusional a bit myself because knowing how credible the source is, I'm still crossing my fingers that this is just bullshit. That's delusional of me knowing how credible the source is. <laughs> but hopefully I'm wrong. But those rumored plot details combined with what the crew have been saying. I probably should stop having any faith that this is going to be like the game in any sort of capacity, but we'll just have to wait and see what Until Dawn offers us. Last thing we're going to talk about here is going to be Scream 7. McKenna Grace is allegedly the latest rumored cast member to be part of Scream 7. Some are saying she's got involved as Sydney's daughter. Now, I have not heard about this in any capacity. I will say that. I have not heard of anything with McKenna Grace being in this film, but I will say this about McKenna. She is one of the best young talents that I have seen recently in a lot of these recent projects or franchises. She was in The Conjuring. She was in one of the Annabelle movies. She was in Ghostbusters. Uh, she was in The Haunting of Hill House. She's done a lot of work as mini me's from my own history of her. I think she's been on Disney Channel too a bit. So she's been of tremendous talent from everything i've seen her in this would be an amazing get for scream the fact of the matter still remains as much as people won't like this or anyone signing on with the project that's why i always say don't have these over parasocial relationships with these celebrities it's very weird and then when stuff like this happens you end up in a predicament where you're disappointed in them it's like you don't even fucking know them you don't know them one thing i will say is that again, you have to be realistic with this. As much as I have issues with Spyglass and as much as many of you have issues with Spyglass over what they did to Melissa and what they did in the past and how I don't have any trust that they won't do something foolish again in the future. People are going to do a screen film. It's a major opportunity to expose their name. They've talked to, to they've told us how during the strike, what they were fighting for, how they want better wages. And now after the strikes, a lot of opportunities are just drying up. There's less projects happening. Hollywood is in the contraction stage. So if you have an opportunity and you're McKenna Grace, you just got done doing Ghostbusters to put a bigger spotlight on your name and it's coming in the form of a screen film. Hell yeah, you're going to do it. I'm not necessarily saying that she's going to sign, but it's not that shocking. Certain people are still going to do Scream 7. It's still a big franchise to be a part of. There are things that we're upset about when it comes to Spyglass, but the reality is a lot of people are not going to be thinking about that in the long run. People are struggling out here. They told us about that during the strike. <laughs> I'm not saying McKenna is struggling or any of these people who sign are struggling, but I don't know their financial situation. So we'll see what comes of that. And I think McKenna would be an amazing choice for Sydney's daughter, actually. Yes, she would need to change her. Well, not really. She doesn't even need to change her hair. Isn't she blonde? Uh, I think she recently dyed her hair according to a new TikTok she had. But I think she would be an amazing choice to carry on the legacy in the way they are trying to with Sydney's daughter, if that ends up being true. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can miss a video. In the description, I have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.